When you generate code with AI, it sometimes has a lot of trouble generating code for entire features where you have to transfer the data from the back end all the way to the front end and display it on the view. For example, if you're using an application like React or using something like Next.js where you have the back end and front end, it often has trouble identifying what keys he has to maintain in order to maintain the data flow all the way from back end to front end. And I've been dealing with this history quite a lot. And so I've, you might have seen in my previous video where I've implemented new strategies in order to reduce the amount of mistake that the AI will make when generating codes. And recently I wanted to figure out a new way to actually figure out how to help it understand how to use this API correctly. I decided to use this new strategy of using an API doc that was specifically designed for the AI and LLM. So making sure that they have all the information they need because in AI generation, context is everything. So the first question I wanted to answer is, how do I give it enough context so that it doesn't make mistakes on my view in the component and on the back end when he's making the entire logic for transferring the data from back end to front end when making the request. And I think I figured out something because I'm really, really happy with the result I was able to get with this new strategy. And I'm going to show you exactly how I've done that in this video, I'm going to show you the breakdown of how I organized my files and the exact prompt that I used when I generated it. And also I'm going to show you the result that I was able to achieve with that. So if you look over here, you'll notice that I'm using a cursor over here. I'm also using WinSurf and I'm going to show you the example with both. So right now in my application, I've created a new folder called API Docs. And in that folder, I'm adding every single logics related to my APIs. So I'm using Next.js and in Next.js, you put all of the API logics under app API and you put the endpoint over here. So for example, API slash generate keyword is an endpoint, API slash generate suggestion is an endpoint. You can see that I also have subfolder. So the endpoint for it will be API slash GitHub search repo and so on and so on. And I've actually created uh, the same folder structure for my API doc. So that it's easy for the AI to actually find those specific files. And I'll show you what I put in my rules for the prompt to essentially look at those files every single time it needs to generate code for it. Let me show you an example of one of the files. So some of the file right now are currently empty because I haven't added anything here, but you can see that for example, for search issues, I've already added some documentation and the structure is as follows. You have the endpoint at the top, authentication, request, header, and the body of the request just like a typical API. This one is a lot more detailed. So you actually have to be very specific so that the AI actually knows exactly what it needs to do. And you don't have to write all of that on your own. The only things that I write to generate this is that I go over here in the chat and I literally drag and drop the file. So I will say, write me an AP, uh, detailed API doc for, and I will grab the file. So let's say for example, if I wanted to write it for, uh, Stripe, or let's say, I'll, let's say for example, if I wanted to write it for user increment, I will drag and drop that here, and I say, uh, and write it inside this file, this file, and I will grab the equivalent file in my API doc, and also drag and drop it. I don't have a folder for usage, so that means that I will have to create that folder in the API doc, so I will create a usage folder to match exactly the same structure. And it's gonna be under usage increments. So I will add a increment folder. Uh, let me double check the writing, perfect. So right now we have usage increment in write.ts. That means that I can just go over here and actually just type create a file increment dot, uh, dot md, which will be the, the documentation for the specific endpoint usage increment. Over here, this is where I will add the logic for it. And essentially all you have to do is drag and dropping that new file you just created. You add it over here and you say, write me a detailed API doc for write.ts, which is uh, usage slash increment slash write.ts and write it inside this file. And all I do, I run this request and I'm using the composer here in cursor and cursor is going to generate the specific city of the documentation for me right here. So like I say, I don't write it from scratch. I just let cursor generate it for me. And once it's done, I just review everything. I make sure that I have everything that I need. So for example, for this one, let's see what it did here. It looks like it generated it, but it didn't actually add it inside of the file. So I'll have create a detailed doc. So I'm seeing the, the beginning of the doc over here. 
it looks like it was truncated and then the rest of the code was not added uh, it's okay so we can reject that head back to the prompt or oh, right here perfect i say write me a detail api doc for write.ts write it inside increment.md and i'm just going to specify to uh to write it in markdown make sure to write it in markdown it should know already but i'm just adding that extra to make sure that when you generate code for it that it's all in markdown in a single file Yes, it looks like it's getting truncated for some reason, but I'll do instead. We're going to reject that. I'll try to do it in the chat. And then I'll say, make sure to write it in a single markdown file. Do not truncate it. It's actually doing that because of the codes, codes and I think it's, it doesn't mean to truncate it. It's just as it's generating it, it's using codes to show the, the code. And that's when it's truncated it, it when it's rendering it. So that's a way to go around that. You can just do what I just did. And you can see that here is generating properly. So all we have to do after it's done is just apply it. Then you, and let's see. So now we have increment usage counters for authenticated users based on specific action type. You can see that I have the endpoint. So API slash usage increments, authentication, request body, some TypeScript definition here, usage types, response. Yeah, it looks like we have everything we want. So technical detail, database integration, and so on and so on the curl, uh, how to make the request. So once you have that, all you have to do is make sure that it's part of your rules. So my ID of choice is actually Windsurf. I've been using cursor just to generate side things like uh, docs and so on on the side while I'm using cursor with my, with my main changes because I'm currently paying for both. All you have to do now is head over to, for example, Windsurf workspace AI rules. If you're using cursor, you can just go in your cursor rules file. I don't have one for this one. But if you don't, you can just head over to settings, uh, cursor setting and add it in your rules over here. So let's see what I've added here. So one of the new lines that I added is this one right here and it's line 14. And what I say here is when writing, updating or consuming API endpoint, always reference the corresponding MD file in the API doc folder. The folder structure mirrors the API path. So for the API slash user endpoint, I'm giving an example here, reference API doc slash users.mg. Prioritize using the description, request parameter, and response formats provided in the documentation to maintain consistency and accuracy. Do not infer or assume API behavior that is not explicitly stated in the file. If the endpoint documentation is missing or incomplete, request clarification instead of making assumption. So this is my prompt for it. That's what I'm using is actually when I'm generating the code, it's always checking the API docs in order to make any changes. This thing has been really, really effective. And I'm going to show you now the prompt that I had uh, generated earlier today. So the issue that I was dealing with is I had a component called Topic Hub Contents, and essentially I wanted to add a new feature where it will display feature requests. So I had an overview component right here. Let me show you. So I had the overview session right here. And right below it, I wanted to add a new component called Feature Request Session. When I tried to implement that before, it made a lot of mistakes because it was confused in terms of where to add it in the code. So it just made a lot of guesses at different parts of the application. It guessed in the backend side and it guessed in the front end side when you had to display it. What I end up with is a non-working functionality that wasn't really working as I expected it to work. It wasn't passing the data across. So in order to resolve that, I not only implemented the API doc, but I also added more context within my component itself. And what I did is I started adding this new, um, this new comments that essentially provide more details about the props, more details about the request output, and more details about the error handling. And just adding that has made a word of a difference because if you look at the code that I was actually able to generate, so I'm going to show you my exact prompt, like I said. So if I scroll all the way up, I said, I've added an API doc folder where the folder structure mirrored the API path. So for the API user endpoint reference API docs. So this is what's in my rule. And I said, I want you to analyze the associated endpoint for the implementation of feature requests and identify what we're currently doing wrong in order to implement a working endpoint. I've also added more comment description to topic hub model. So the description that you're seeing over here to help with this investigation. 
Our goal is to make sure that OpenAI.js return a response containing the feature request array that we pass all the way to the view props, the pickup.tsx and to this one. The final component where the things that are going to be displayed is feature request section. So I wanted to make sure that it has context of the component chain so that it's not making mistakes in terms of where to display it. Then I added for context, solution request under team is not the same thing as feature request because it had a tendency to confuse the two. So you would assume that they were the same thing and would actually merge the, the keys together and then I would not end up seeing things and it will end up breaking the other functionality. It's used to help generate a summary of the solution request and feature request is a list of the specific features that people are requesting in discussion. You might notice that I'm doing a lot of typos here, but it's, it's fine, it's getting everything in context. Similarly to topics where we list the topic happening in discussion, we want to, to list the features requested in discussion. So that was my prompt. And then when I submitted that, I was really surprised by the chain of thought that he actually went through in order to fix everything. Because just to give you context, this is an issue that I've been dealing with for the entire night. So I was just like dealing with this issue and I wanted to make sure to resolve it using AI because I wanted to make sure that it's able to generate this kind of thing consistently without making mistakes. So I wanted to really identify where am I missing some context to help it do its job correctly. And this is what he did. So he started by analyzing the id.md file. He said, let me check the component chain to understand how the data should flow. So remember how I mentioned the component chain above over here? So he actually ended up analyzing the component chain to see how the data was being passed from one component to the other. And then he said, here's what I found. And he said, here's the issue. So he said, the API response in schema doesn't include the feature request array in its response. So he identified this issue first. And then he says, in OpenAI.ts, we're generating feature requests, but they're not being passed through the API response. The Topic Hub content component expects feature requests as part of the Topic Hub summary, and so on and so on. So you just like analyze exactly what was happening in my code and kind of gave me a summary of the issue. And then you analyze the data flow, because remember, I have data flow command inside of my code over here, and he wanted to double check if the data flow was working as expected. And he say, here's, here's what the data flow is actually supposed to, to do. And then he checked the required changes and he said, I've updated the API documentation. So he actually went ahead and modified the API documentation as what he was actually supposed to do from a good understanding and context of what was happening from, from all of the comments that I've added inside of the code. And he say, and ensure openai.js return feature requests correctly. So he updated my documentation, then went back to all of the different calls that he was supposed to use and make sure to analyze each of them. Then he went and he said, perfect, the interface are already set up correctly. When he checked it, just, he just made sure that it was working as expected based on the new documentation and realized that, oh, you know what? Feature request is working as expected. Feature request section is working as expected. Topic hub summary actually has the content. And he said, but there's an issue. And he decided to fix it. And he, once he identified the issue, he fixed it right away. And he said, okay, I see the issue now because it's already generating feature request correctly, but we need to make sure it's being included in the API response. So just from this added context, he was able to, do, to improve his analysis much better and do all of the step-by-step -step check because he had context at every single step, the, the data flow, the component chain, and all of the input and output that I had given to it and the API doc. And he was able to just know when he was doing something wrong and actually keep moving forward and fixing things along the way. And then after that, say, I see the API route structure has changed. Let me check the new API doc because he updated the API docs early on, realized that, and then now check it again and say the API documentation correctly shows that feature request should be in response under summary feature request. And so on function is already generating the feature request correctly. Component expect them in data summary feature request. Then he says the issue might be in how we passing the data through the component chain. Let me check the topic hub content. And as you can see, I've only passed one single prompt and he was able to do every single step mentioned over here just in one go. And then he say, I found the issue. The topic hub content component has tabs for teams, topic, repository, history, and keyword, but it's missing a tab for feature requests. And then he figured out exactly what he needed to do in order to fix it. And he say, let me update topic hub component. Then he implemented the fix, this component, and then he say, now the data flow is complete and generate feature requests from solution requests and so on and so on. And the final output was actually that under feature requests, 
I was finally able to see the feature request implemented as expected. Just for context for what I was doing before, when I generated the code before, just doing this implementation from backend to front end didn't work right away. It just made so many mistakes because now my code has evolved so much, there's different part and different component that just confused it. So I needed to add enough context for it to know exactly what to do. And as you can see, it was very, very effective. So what do I plan to do? I plan to make like a, a complete convention workflow for building with AI. I'm going to make this doc, I'm going to make it available online for free. I'm gonna make sure to share it as soon as I have it. And I'm going to make a video where I'll give you a complete breakdown of how to use my AI workflow. And I think actually I might end up turning this entire thing into a lean checker. So like when you're writing your code, it can automatically tell you what kind of context you're missing so that you can add this context into your application. And it does all of this magic for you uh, right away. So this is what I think I'm gonna do because this workflow has been a game changer for how I code with AI. And it's been really effective for me to actually build Git clients. I want to make sure that all of these resources are available for you. This is why I'm making this video. And this is why I'm making all those Notion resources. And if you don't see the link in the description below, just make sure to subscribe. If you don't want to miss the video that I release when I make my full complete workflow, including the new tool that I created for doing link checking for your AI comments. All right, I hope that was helpful. If you liked the video, please make sure to hit a thumb, a big thumb. I really appreciate that. That's going to make a world of a difference. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.